Sudden cardiac arrest is a condition where the heart's electrical impulses suddenly become chaotic. Unless a normal rhythm can be restored, death follows in minutes. A revolutionary new tool can now be added to your medical kit to assist victims who suffer cardiac arrest while on the water. That tool is an automated external defibrillator, or AED. Often the abnormal heart rhythm that caused the problem, that is blood not circulating, can be reset using an electric shock generated by the AED. Carrying one on board your vessel drastically increases the victim's chances of survival. The defibrillator you are seeing on your screen is the PowerHeart AED. It is portable, solidly built, low maintenance, and very user-friendly. There are other defibrillators on the market that work in a similar way, but there can be differences. Please consult the instructions for the model you have chosen before operating. Let's rewind to the arrival on scene and review what CCGA CPR First Aid Training has already taught you about evaluating the victim and the signs that point to cardiac arrest. Ask questions to those who saw what happened as you do a visual check to make sure that there were no injuries if the victim had fallen. These same steps must also be performed when using the Automatic External Defibrillator, or AED. If the victim is not lying flat on his or her back, gently roll them into that position. Put on gloves. Check for breathing and signs of circulation. Usually if the victim's lips are turning purple or he has extremely pale or bluish skin, this is a sign of no blood circulation. If the victim is not breathing and unresponsive, begin CPR immediately. Find the nipple line, place your hands as shown in the center and begin chest compressions. Push hard and fast. This is critical as you have to keep the blood circulating if the victim is gonna have any chance of survival. At the same time, request one of your CCGA crew to get the AED and kit. Once you have done 30 compressions and given breaths, quickly loosen or cut away and remove victim's clothing to reveal a bare chest. If necessary, wipe the patient's chest to remove water or perspiration. Remove any nitro or nicotine patches that are in the way as leaving them on could burn the victim. If the chest is especially hairy, you may have to use the disposable razor to clean off the area where the pad will go. If this is not done, it is possible contact will not be made. Also, check to make sure the deck area around the victim is relatively dry. A victim should not be in a puddle of water, nor should the rescuer be kneeling in a puddle of water when operating the AED. If there is water there, try to towel it up or move the patient. AEDs can be used in various environments, including rain and snow, but always use common sense when using it. While you are doing that, have the other crewmen open the AED lid. Tear open package and remove pads. Tear open package and remove pads. Opening the lid automatically activates it. Tear open the electrode package along the marked bottom. The electrode wires do not have to be completely torn away from the package to use it. Peel one pad from plastic liner. Peel one pad from plastic liner. Grasping the clearly marked corner of the electrode, peel away one electrode from the liner. Be careful not to touch the electrode surface or let the wires stick to it. This can burn the victim if the wires are between the electrode pad and skin. Place one pad on bare upper chest. Place one pad on bare upper chest. This means while placement on the chest is critical, either electrode can be placed in either location. Some units do require each pad to be placed in a specific spot. Again, find the nipple line. Now, following the easy diagram on the package, Place one electrode on the victim's right side under the collarbone and above the nipple line and carefully press down. Peel second pad and place on bare lower chest as shown. 
Peel second pad and place on bare lower chest as shown. Peel away the second electrode and place it on the left side of the bare lower chest, also face down as per the diagram. If you hear this prompt, Check pads. Check pads. It means the electrode is not making sufficient contact. Press down to check to make sure the electrodes are firmly attached to the victim. If this error message repeats after you've pressed down on the pads, remove these electrodes and replace it with new ones. Do not touch patient. Analyzing rhythm. When you hear this message, make sure you or anyone else are not touching the victim. It is important to avoid touching the victim while the defib is analyzing the victim's heart rhythm. Shock advised. Charging. If the defib finds a shockable rhythm, the voice prompt will let you know and the device will begin charging. Stand clear. Shock will be delivered in three, two, one. This AED unit is fully automatic. However, there are other AED units that require you to push a button to deliver the shock. Again, study the user manual with your AED unit before operating. Shock delivered. It is now safe to touch the patient. The unit will then prompt you to begin CPR. Start CPR. Give 30 compressions. Then give two breaths. Give breath. The AED will ask you to repeat the whole process if the shock was not successful in resetting the heart. Do not touch patient. Analyzing rhythm. If the victim's rhythm changes after the defib has advised a shock, it will cancel the shock. Do not touch patient. Analyzing rhythm. Stand clear. Rhythm change. Shock canceled. There are two reasons for this. Either the shock was successful and the heart is beating as it should, or it is not picking up any heartbeat or shockable rhythm. In that case, it is really important to keep the blood circulating by doing CPR until you rendezvous with paramedics. They have additional resources to stimulate and jumpstart the heart. Even as the victim starts to come around, it is important to leave the defibrillator in place until the paramedics take over. The unit will continue to monitor his or her heart in case it goes into defibrillation again. The victim can then be placed on a stretcher or backboard and moved over to the CCGA vessel for transportation back to the wharf. This defibrillator can help you save lives. You and your team should review the operating procedures of your defib unit periodically in order to keep the training current. The PowerHeart AED defibrillator comes with an extended life lithium battery that does not require charging. There is a smart gauge battery indicator that you can look at to see the amount of battery life remaining. The unit will also tell you if battery power is low. Battery low. It also has a rescue ready indicator light on the outside. You should carry the following as part of your defib kit. Towels, blunt end scissors, disposable razor, mouth barrier, four x four gauze, and disposable non-latex gloves. The blunt end scissors are to cut away any clothing in order to expose the bare chest. The towels are to pat down the patient in case he is wet from water or perspiration. The mouth barrier is to protect the user when giving mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. And the gauze is in case the victim is bleeding from a fall when the heart attack began. Note that defibrillation pads are one use only. Replenish stock as required. Also check best before dates on the pads. They have a two year shelf life. If the victim is a child under eight years old or weighing under 55 pounds or 25 kilograms, use the pad labeled pediatric attenuated electrode pads. However, treatment should not be delayed in order to determine a victim's exact weight or age. If the heart attack victim is female, the procedure is exactly the same. A life is at stake. It is no time to hesitate. Open up or cut through the front of the top garment. Cut the bra between the cups and attach defib electro pads the same way as is done with a male. Follow the prompts given by the defibrillator. 
Do not touch patient. Analyzing rhythm. If the defib starts to cycle again while you are moving the victim, put the backboard down and follow the commands. It is indicating that the heart is still in defibrillation and needs to be shocked again. If the victim has a pacemaker, you are still able to proceed as you normally would with pads placed as indicated. Pacemakers are not affected by the AED shock as long as they are at least an inch away from the pad. If the victim has a drain tube or catheter positioned on his right chest or something positioned just under the skin where the pad is supposed to go, position one pad centered on the breastplate at the nipple line in front and the other pad in the back between his or her shoulder blades, then follow prompts as indicated. Shock advised. Charging. Stand clear. Shock will be delivered in three, two, one. Shock delivered. Attention, okay. monsieur. On va vous placer. Voilà. Remove square foil package from lid of AED. Tear open foil package across dotted line and remove pads. Next, separate one of the white pads completely from blue plastic liner. Begin peeling from the tabbed corner. Firmly place the pad without the liner on the patient exactly as illustrated. This pad can be placed on either of the two locations shown. Next, peel the blue plastic liner off of the second white pad. Firmly place the second pad on the opposite location, exactly as illustrated. Do not touch patient. Analyzing heart rhythm. Please wait. Preparing shock. Move away from the patient. Shock will be delivered in three, two, one. Shock delivered. It is now safe to touch the patient. When instructed, give patient 30 rapid compressions. Then give two breaths. Place heel of one hand on center of chest between nipples. Place heel of other hand directly on top of first hand. Lean over patient with elbows straight. Press the patient's chest down rapidly one third depth of chest, then release. Start CPR. Press, 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 press. Stop compressions. Give breath. Give breath. Continue with compressions. 